Hey guys, it's May May and welcome back to our Push the Envelope Challenge that Gareth and I are doing. Gareth is from G's Creations. If you're not familiar, I'll have a link to his channel below and you can go check him out. And every Friday in the month of February, we'll be uploading a video where we push the envelope punch board and try to do something unique with it. Now, I'm just going to tell you something. A lot of people have done a lot of things with the envelope punch board and it's really hard to find something that's not been done before. So you may see that we're just taking ideas that have been done before and then um, making them our own. And that's okay because that's pushing the envelope punch board too. Now, the way we want to get you guys involved in this challenge is when you see us make something with the envelope punch board or if you have an idea, we'd like for you to create it, take a photo and share it on May May Made It and So Did I Facebook group so we can all see what you're doing. So after you watch our challenge videos, get involved with this. It'll be super fun. Okay, so today I'm going to do something. I don't know if someone's done this before. I was playing with, I want to show you how this came about. Literally, this is how this happened. I had this big piece of paper. I'm not going to show you the corner yet. I had this big piece of paper. I took out this board and I went, okay, let's start punching. So I was like, I wonder what happens if you turn it on its side and put it in here like this. Well, this is what you get. Let me move my hand so you can see it. You get that little notch and that sparked the whole thing. This whole piece of paper is what sparked it. <laughs> so this is how we're going to do this today. This is an A2 size card. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock cut in half down the middle, long ways, folded at the top to be a portrait style card. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a ticket card um, and you might even think it looks like a post, like a postage stamp, but for me it's more like a ticket. So here's what you'll do. We're going to work on the points of the paper. And you're going to take the folded card, okay, and you're going to put that point into your punch. Now here's the trick with this. You cannot line it up with this score line. I wish you could. Unfortunately, if you line it up, let me just show you what happens. If you line it up with the score line and then cut, you're not going to get what we're looking for. And I'll show you. You just get that which is not what we're looking for. So that doesn't work, but if you will take your paper, and do you see how you have this kind of um, half moon or notch out in here? We're gonna center our corner piece inside of that. Basically, you're gonna eyeball this, and I'm big on that, right? So we're gonna take this corner, we're gonna put it into the center of this punch, and what I do is I try to make sure that I have the same amount on this side and this side. Now here's what I will tell you. I was like, this is never going to work. This is going to have to be way too precise to make this happen. But believe it or not, it works. So I get this little notch here. Then I'm just going to turn it and do the same thing here. Just kind of eyeballing that I have the same amount sticking out and punch. So now I end up with that. And now I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom. So this is kind of fun. It's a different way to use our punches. And you know what? I've always wanted a punch in my stash that would do this. Um, and I don't have I didn't have one and I thought, well, that was a happy accident. So there's four sides of the card itself. So see now we have our entire card punched. Now let's punch some matte pieces for the card. This little teal blue piece, by the way, Gareth and I challenged each other not to use traditional Valentine colors. So that's why you're not seeing a lot of red and black and white, which you know is my thing, but that's why we're doing this. So this little piece, it has a little mess up in it, but I'm going to hide that with the mats. You're going to do it the same way. You're going to slide it into your punch on the diagonal, eyeball the edges, and punch. Do this on all four sides. And again, just eyeballing. You could take some tape or a marker and make a couple little marks if you want to make sure you're in the same spot every time. But I found this worked pretty good. Let me show you what that looks like on our card base. Now, I will tell you this. This piece is cut one quarter of an inch shorter all the way around. So instead of being four and a half by five and four and a quarter by five and a half, this piece was four by five and a quarter. An eighth inch doesn't work. Let me show you. If you only cut it one eighth of an inch shorter, it doesn't quite line up. You can get it to line up on several sides, but like that bottom corner, doesn't quite work. So the quarter of an inch difference on your mat is a better option. You get a better look. So there's that one. And now I'm going to do another mat. I want to do one more on top. You don't have to do this many mats, but my white cardstock is not very thick. And if I have a very thin base, card base, I like to do several mats because that way I get a much sturdier feel to the card. Last one. So now we end up with 
three mats. Let me try to line them up so you can see them. I like how this looks. Just looks like a ticket. Now I'm doing this where it opens forward, but can you imagine if you did it like this and made it like an invitation or something and it was like, this is your ticket. Wouldn't that be cute? And you could print it on the um, computer. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is, now this one's a little bit different. <laughs> this one's, that's country right there. This is a little bit different. I've taken a couple of strips of paper and I don't remember the sizes. Let me tell you what they are. Here we go, got a ruler. Okay, this is three and one quarter by one and a quarter. So your first, your piece you're gonna stamp on, three and a quarter by one and a quarter. The base piece is one and three eighths by three and a half, okay? So there's your measurements for those. And here's what you'll do. I'm gonna use this little guy to make like a banner piece. I'm gonna center this inside this punch, just like I just did, just eyeballing it. Just eyeball the center of this page. And what I do is I kinda look down here where these stripes are and use one of them to help me get it lined up straight and then punch. See that? We kinda get like a banner piece. Now I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of lining it up, centered, and punch. So look at that little piece we get. Isn't that cute? And I'm going to do the same thing with this piece, and this is going to be the mat for that sentiment spot. It's pretty forgiving. You think you you think it wouldn't be, but it really does just seem to work. All right. And now this guy will line up inside of here. Also, I cut this one a quarter of an inch different. It works better in quarters than, than it does in eights. All right. So now we can assemble our card, and we're through with the punch board. Okay, so here's the pieces that we just did. I'm going to put those aside for a second. This piece here, I cut from a Fisker's punch. I love this scallop punch. And it's two and a quarter inch for that. But I wanted to put this on top of that heart piece, and I didn't think it would show very well. So I cut this little piece to go behind it, which is two and a half by two and a half. Okay, so now we're going to stamp on this guy. I have this really, really cute... Um, Valentine stamp that I got at, I think I got this at Walmart, and I'm going to use my stamp positioner because I want to get it just right on this square, so let me show you how to do that. If you've never used a stamp positioner before, today is the day to see it. Okay, what you do is, with your stamp positioner, you get this little piece, and it's matte on one side and shiny on the other. You want the shiny side up, okay? You're going to put that little piece of plastic in the corner of your stamp -a jig or positioner, whichever one you have. Take your ink, go ahead and ink up your stamp. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just a, kind of like a placeholder for our stamp. Push that stamp into the corner of the stamp -a jig stamp onto your acrylic, okay? Not perfect, but that's okay. I just didn't want this to be crooked on my little sheet. So now I'm gonna bring this little guy over here. I do everything on an angle, do you guys do that? Put this guy where I want it, okay? Inside of that little scallop. Then bring my stamp position her back over my stamp -a jig and line it up to the corner of that. I'm being gentle because I don't want to move my scallop. Okay, and now we ink up again. This time I'm going for better ink. <laughs> and then we put into the corner, press and stamp. And there we go. I think it's so cute. Okay, so Put that aside for a few minutes. We're through with the stamp positioner because the next stamps I'm going to use are going to be clear stamps. So we're in good shape there. So, something else I want to show you that I discovered that I was playing around with. If you take a colored Wink of Stella, these are those glitter brush pens. See these hearts? I think this is so cute. If you want to glitter them, I'm taking a red Wink of Stella and coloring on top of those black hearts and it will sort of make it look like a multiple colored image. Make it look like you masked off because it paints red anywhere there's white and adds glitter to the black. I love this and I'll show you. I've got another thing I'm going to do to show you another way of using it or another way it looks. But I really like using this um, just like that. I think I'm even going to color the little arrow. Because the ink um, from the marker is sort of transparent, it just kind of works. It just does two things at once. It glitters and colors all at one time. I love how that does. I'll bring it up so you can see it. So 
So see how you get the color and you get the stamp. I love that. I found that out by accident, so that was super fun. All right, this little guy I'm going to pop up on here, but first, I don't love this white edge on this cardstock, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to ink it. <laughs> just tapping it into my ink pad because I don't love that little white edge. Do you guys have shortcuts you like to use too? This keeps me from having to put black ink onto a dauber. And now it's all gone. Now it's all white. Okay, we're good. I mean, it's all black. We are good. Let's put some foam tape on the back of this guy. Look, it was Christmas paper. But I needed a little gray, and that's all I had. That was from a 6x6 six six Christmas paper pad. And then this little dude is going to go right here. Press that into place and move it aside. Now let's do the stamping for this one. What I've done here is I have a little stamp that says Happy Valentine's Day and it's from Close to My Heart. And I've double loaded it with another heart because we're going to use this too and I'm going to show you another um, that using that Wink of Stella again on this one. So we're going to use this side for now. Bring my black ink back over. I like this stamp. I've used it a lot lately. As you can imagine with the holiday here. So there's Happy Valentine's Day. Love it. I'm going to go ahead and put this up on here with some foam too. And that's from that same Christmas paper. Do you guys do that? Do you stretch your papers and use them just because they're the right color? I sure do. I also just tear pieces of foam and I don't really care if they're square or not because who's going to see them, right? See how that <laughs> it works. Now let's line this guy up. Just like so. So now we have our sentiment and our little focal point. Now let's put these guys together. Before I put this one down, I have this piece of ribbon that I want to put at the bottom because I want this to lay across the top of that. Just like that. So I want to decide where I want it on the card. I'm thinking somewhere like that. So what I'm going to do is run some ATG down the edges. And take my ribbon and stick it into place. Wrap it around. I love this seam binding ribbon. It is beautiful. Now, I don't normally do this. I picked up some clear tape. You'll probably know I said I was out of it. But I'm going to put some clear tape on this back here because this ribbon is pretty thick and I don't want it to slip out. And that way I know it'll be back there for good. And let's get it lined up straight. And now I will put some more adhesive. And when I'm doing ribbon or something, I just run the adhesive right over the back of it. That'll just help hold it down. So now this piece is going to go into our pretty blue piece. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and stick this down to the front of our card. All right, and now I'm going to use some more foam on the back of here. The thing about this 3M foam, it's not extremely thick. It's not. It's only about an eighth of an inch thick, where a lot of the sticky things that you pick up from the craft stores and things like that are a quarter of an inch thick. So if you want to get more dimension on your card, this way you're getting the same amount of dimension, but we're splitting it into two places. So instead of just having one piece popped up a quarter of an inch, we have two pieces popped up and they're an eighth of an inch each. If that makes sense. But I think I used to not use this tape and I saw so many people using it and I thought, I'm just going to try it. The biggest thing I like about it is being able to tear it to size that I want it to be. I love that part. And this little guy is going to go in this area. Just like so. And now we can pop our sentiment up. And let's see how I want to do that. I don't think I want to pop that up because of that ribbon behind it. I'm just going to run some ATG on either edge. And then this is going to center on our tape and stitches. Just press that into place. And that 
could be our card, but I want to add one more little element to show you how to do this. But isn't that cute with the little ticket corners? I love it. All right, one more thing. We're going to go back to this little um, punch here, the little heart punch I told you about. And this is some scrap from that paper I used earlier. I'm going to ink this little heart up. And this is one of those um, really full image stamps, so you have to make sure you let those sit for just a second. So your ink transfers well. And now I'm going to go back to that Wink of Stella. Give that just a second to dry. And then, can you see these lines inside of the heart? You see how it has all those little lines? I'm going to show you what this does. I just love this. It looks like we took the time to mask off and ink up and then glitter. But we're doing it all in this simple step. I just, I've been doing this a lot since I, since I did this the first time. I tried it on a Valentine um, thing I was making for my son's girlfriend. And after doing it the first time, I have done this several times since. So, this is what it looks like when you just color it with the Wink of Stella. Isn't that awesome? And then I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to run this Wink of Stella slightly outside the edge. I have to be quiet when I do it because I, I wiggle too much. I'm wiggling now anyway. I did this much better when I did it without talking. And I'm sure you guys can do that too, but talking makes my hand wiggle. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Okay, so now let me bring that up where you guys can see that one. Now it looks like we've matted it, colored it, inked it, glittered it. You see what I'm saying? It's like we did a whole bunch of work to it. So now I'm going to fussy cut it out because it's just a little heart shape. That won't be a big deal. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of that gray border around the edge. So now we have this little element for our card. Isn't it cute? And it looks like we did a whole lot of work to it. The glitter, the shimmer, and the color. And I think I want to put this right in this area just for a little extra added something. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back. And just stick that down. And really you could do this card without that little heart, but I really wanted to show you how that looks. I think that is super cool. So there you go. This is, I'm trying to get it in the frame. There we go. This is the ticket card made with your envelope punch board. I think it worked really well. I'm really excited about this. So if you're making any of these projects, be sure to share them with us and let us see them. We would love to see them. Be sure to go check out Gary's channel at G's Creations. There'll be a link below. And his video will be up today too where he is doing a stationary project today. That was our theme for today was stationary. There you go, guys. I will talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.